Give me just a moment, folks. We'll be getting started in just a moment. Give me just a moment. God bless everyone today. Blessings. God bless everyone today. God is getting all the glory. He's getting all the honor, all the praise. We just bless, adore, and esteem him now. Thank you so much for being on this live. You could have been somewhere else, but we praise God that you've chosen to worship with us today. So we do give the Father all the glory, all the honor. Let me see if I can adjust my lighting here just in just a moment. Get me in a better position light-wise. Amen. God gets the glory. Let me, give me a second. Let me get some more light. I'm a little dark looking to myself. Bear with me just a moment here. There we go. We can get a little bit more light here. That's much better. All right, now I'm ready to get started. Amen. I apologize for the delay this afternoon. God gets the glory, the honor, and praise. Let us pray. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Father, we just bless, adore, magnify, edify, glorify, and exalt you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you for all that you've done and for all that you said you're going to do. Father, we just magnify, edify, glorify, and exalt you for your goodness and for your mercy and for your grace. Now, as we enter your presence, we repent of all sin all iniquity, all ungodliness. Father, everything we have done, said, thought, imagined, it would keep you from getting the glory. We repent even now in the precious and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Father, we say, release your presence. Release the Holy Spirit. Release an anointing upon us now for your glory. Anoint your word for your glory and for your kingdom. Bind Satan and every spirit of the enemy that would keep you from getting all the glory. Bind him now, but open our hearts and our minds that we're receptive to this word now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. We give God glory on and praise for each and every one of you. For those of you who don't know me, um, I'm, I'm 32 Rock, or better known uh, on 
TikTok is 32 Rock, but at the same time, Apostle Barry Spates to all my other followers. So God gets the glory on and praise. We thank you for being on this platform today, and we just bless and adore our Lord and Savior. Turn to if you will in your Bibles to St. John chapter 5. I want to just do a couple of verses there and just give you some insight and just maybe release some nug nuggets if the Holy Spirit allow me to, to release some um, revelation. I want to do that today as well also. So we do thank the Father for revelation in the Word. St. John chapter 5, starting with the first verse. And I, I released this this morning um, in my video, but I want to really teach on it today to give you a greater insight as to how God shifts things and how he begins to move miraculously in your favor in spite of what it looks like. And if you, if you don't hear anything else I say today, hear this, and that is that God is going to, and he wants to move in your situation. He wants to give you favor in a way that no one gets credibility for it, but him. Look at verse number one in chapter five of St. John. It says, and after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the, by the sheep uh, market, a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. Uh, in these lays a great multitude of important folk. Uh, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For the angel, or for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then, first after troubling the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. A certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. So this man was sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, would thou be made whole? Notice Jesus asked this man a particular question. He only wanted to know, are you willing to be healed? Are you willing to be made whole? Now, now, now don't want you catching this. It's not just from your crippled situation. To be made whole does not mean to be made whole from your financial situation or from your, your sickness or your disease. But to be made whole means to be made whole completely. In other words, bringing you to a place of shalom in every aspect. And this is what Jesus said to this man. He asked him, did he want to be made whole of his situation? Which, meaning he healed him. But I'm, let me give you a good, good example of what I mean. If you are ungodly or if you're a sinner, uh, salvation, when salvation comes, you're cured of sicknesses and you're cured of diseases. A lot of people don't realize it from that perspective because they don't understand that they have to begin to decree and declare divine healing. One of the things we have to understand is that when, when, when there's a wholeness or when there's a miracle or when there's a healing taking place in your life, God don't just want to heal you physically, but he wants to heal everything attached to you. In other words, every situation or every circumstance that you may be facing, when the miracle takes place in your life physically, that miracle is a sign to make everything around you whole. So that means whatever you're dealing with, God begins to move in those areas as well to begin to bring completion or wholeness in those areas. Let's go back to verse number one for just a moment. I want to break it down. If you notice, Jesus in this place is at a feast. And not only that, but it ends. And when it ends, Jesus leaves and he goes to the marketplace. Now, some of the greatest miracles that will ever happen in, in life today happens in the marketplace. Where's the marketplace? That is an open area or let's just say the bus stop or let's just say uh, the grocery store or, or let's just say downtown at the bus line. These areas are known as the marketplace. Any place you're dealing with outside of the ecclesia, uh, outside of the sanctuary is known as the marketplace. Each and every one of us as sons and daughters in the kingdom, we have a marketplace anointing. We're anointed to go into the hedges and the highways and move in signs, oneness, and miracles to move supernaturally. We're anointed to begin to move in greater power and greater authority. Let me tell you something. Miracles and signs and wonders come 
after the word. In other words, they follow the word of God. I'll give you a good example of what I mean. When you preach and you declare and you decree the gospel of the kingdom, once you do that and you're finished with the message and you begin to pray for people because you've decreed and declared the word of God, right behind that word, you should be expecting God to move miraculously in your life. You should be expecting God to move miraculously in the lives of others. In other words, when you preach, you should expect supernatural miracles, signs and wonders to take place. If you notice when Jesus left in verse number two, it says now there was, I'm sorry, it says now there is at Jerusalem by the, the, by the sheep a market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Now this pool has five porches. One of the things I know many of us know about the number five, it is the number of mercy. It is the number of grace. Now, each one of these porches play a vital role, and we're not going to get into that today. I don't want to go into that realm because I want to, I want to deal with the miracle. But each one of these porches played a vital and an important role where the individuals were concerned. But let's go to the next verse. It says, and, and these laid a great multitude. I want you to know these people were very, very important people. Now, businessmen, and I'm just, I'm, and I'm just paraphrasing. They could have been businessmen. They could have been people of wealth, but they, they had clout. They, 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 they had great representation. They could have been royal in some kind of way. So these weren't just ordinary people that were considered to be poor people, but these people played a very important role. Now, notice something. The anointing is not only for just those who are poor, but it's for those who are wealthy. It's for those who are rich. It's for those who increase in abundance. So see, these people were very important, but they were blind people. Not only that, they were withered. They had lost a limb. Not only that, but they were crippled. They couldn't walk and they were sick with diseases. But see, Jesus' mercy and his grace is to the extent that he deals with those who are, le who are wealthy. So see, the, 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 the healing power, the anointing of God is not just for those of us who are less fortunate, but it's for everybody. When Jesus died and he rose, he rose for the sin, S-I-N, of the entire world. Now, he would that we be saved. It's left up to us to choose or to accept to have salvation. But it's his desire that you and I and, and the entire world accept him as their Lord and their Savior. Now, look at the next verse, verse number um. Number four, it says for an angel, and this is what I want you to catch, for an angel went down at a certain season. Now notice something, miracles happen in timing and in seasons. Now, let me give you a good example of what I mean when I say that. Let's just say you hear that there is a, I don't know if any of you have been, been to Benny Hinn, I've been imparted in by him, but if you go to Benny Hinn Crusade, you will see people come in that crusade and they will receive miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Now, that's divine timing. That's appointed. Now, but then when the crusade is over, you see people leaving in wheelchairs. You see people that didn't get a miracle. And the reason is because it wasn't their time. It wasn't their season. So in the process, you go through things in life that, that, that bring about maturity, that develop you, and it brings you into a certain process. Now, while you're going through these things, you're developing and you're growing. So there will come a day when you mature in the right time, in the right season. Now, when you mature in that place, then the, 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 the greatest move or the greatest miracle can begin to happen or take place in your life. And I'll show you that in just a minute in the Word. So seasons are matter, matter with God. Now, let me give you a good example of what I mean. Let's just say you receive a prophetic word of the Lord. When you obtain that prophetic word of the Lord... What happens is this, it puts you in a new process. It puts you in a new season. It causes you to desire to know what is it that God is saying to me in this season. So now that I've received the word of God, now I've got to develop in that word. I've got to mature in that word. I've got to walk that word out. In other words, I've got to watch that word manifest verbatim in my life daily. As that word manifests in my life verbatim daily, I'm in a place called times and seasons. Certain things happen at certain times and certain things happen at certain seasons, but it is a process that I'm in 
Not only that, it, it is a process, but it is a level where I'm maturing in God. I'm growing in God. So as I'm maturing and as I'm growing in God, I'm advancing and I'm accelerating. So I'm growing and I'm maturing to be able to move and maneuver in a certain measure of kingdom in a certain season. Now that that has been explained, let's look at this. So the angel came down at a certain time in a certain season. Now, he came in the pool and he troubled the water. Now he released on that water. Now, once this angel releases on the water, that water is now ready for someone to step in to receive a miracle. But now catch this. Miracles happen when you believe. Now, just because the water was troubled does not necessarily mean that everybody that stepped in and got their healing. But everybody that believed got their healing because with, with anything happening in life, there comes a measure where you've got to believe that God will do the impossible. There comes a time where you have to believe that God will do the supernatural. Whether you, whether you understand or not, is not doesn't matter because the word says lean not to your own understanding. So it doesn't require you understanding the miracle. It requires you believing. See, the Bible says trust. That means to trust or to believe or to rely on. So it's not about understanding how God is going to move in your situation. It's about believing that God can move in your situation. It's about believing that God can do the impossible. It's about believing that God can move and work a miracle in your life. This is what it's about. When you believe that God can do the impossible, when you believe that God will work a miracle in your life, manifestation begins to take place. Now, back to the word for just a moment. So a certain season, a certain time, he troubled the water. Whosoever then first stepped in, after the troubling took place, and they stepped into the water, that's where the miracle began to happen. That's where the miracle took place in your life, in the lives of those around you that believe that are believing God for the impossible. If they believe that God can do the impossible in their life, the impossible will manifest. What God has ordained will happen. What God has planned will happen. It's just a matter of believing it. In other words, it's like faith. Faith is not seen. Faith is believed. It is seen invisibly, meaning that you can have a vision that you're moving in a certain place in God. And because you believe that you're moving in that place, manifestation can come. And it doesn't take a lot of faith. All it, all it has to be is a grain of a mustard seed. And if you take a mustard seed and plant it, it grows into a humongous tree. Now, let's look. These people had a diseases and they stepped into the water. The word says in verse number five in St. John, the fifth chapter, it says, and a certain man was there which had a infirmity 38 years. So he was sick in his body for 38 years. He would go to that pool and he would try to step down. But in the process of stepping down, somebody stepped in that pool ahead of him. And as a result of them stepping in that pool ahead of him, they got the miracle and he remained sick. So he had to wait another year for the, for the angel to come down the, in a certain season and trouble that water again. Now, can you imagine going through this 38 times and waiting 38 years before your miracle comes? A lot of people are in situations in their life right now where they're believing God for the impossible in their life and in the storm that they're in. But in the process of the storm, in the process of what they're going through, there's a thing called preparation. There's a thing called preparing. There's a thing called believing that God can do the impossible in the midst of what you may be experiencing and what you may be going through. It is a process that God takes each and every one of us through as sons and daughters in the kingdom. In this process, this is where your miracle happens. A lot of people don't really receive from the Father. Immediately, but in the process of God moving in the situation, they're not willing to wait on God. They try to help God. They try to push God. They try to make God do it quickly and fast as possible. But you've got to be still. And you've got to wait on the Lord to begin to bring the shift. You've got to wait on the Lord to begin to bring the, bring the healing or whatever it is that you need him to do. This man waited 38 years, but he was persistent. Let me tell you something. Miracles happen in your life because you are persistent. Miracles happen in your life because you are diligent. In other words, he did not quit. He did not stop, but he kept going 
and going and going and going. And every time he took a step toward that pool and he waited on that angel to trouble that water, he was activating a measure of faith. Now, let me tell you something. Miracles happen when you activate your faith. Miracles happen when you make an effort. Let me tell you something. Faith is a action word. This man at the pool of Bethesda, he took action. He was there, although he didn't reap the harvest, although he didn't get his healing for 38 years, he made an effort. He came, he stayed there, and he waited till that angel came. Even though no one helped him in the water, he waited. But what I love about this thing was Jesus knew his situation. He knew what he had been going through. Let me tell you something. Jesus knows your situation. He knows what you're going through. He just wants you to be persistent. He just wants you to continue to strive toward the mastery. He just wants you to continue to remain, excuse me, to remain faithful uh, in the word, to remain faithful in your trust. In other words, don't, don't waver in your faith, but be firm, be persistent, be, be, be continuing. In other words, be intentional. A uh, guy wrote a song that's called Intentional. You got to be intentional in our efforts. We got to be intentional in our walk. We got to be intentional in our talk. And even though this man didn't receive his miracle, he went believing that he would be healed. He went believing that I'm going to get in this pool this time for 38 years. Imagine that. 38 years, you continue to go to the same place believing a miracle is going to happen and you don't see it. Why? Because of something called divine timing. In Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, it talks about times and it talks about seasons. In other words, being in the right place at the right time in the right season determines manifestation in your life. Now, being too early, you may not get the miracle. Being too late, you may miss the miracle. But there's always opportune time to receive that miracle again. So he waited 38 years. Now, Jesus sees him there at verse number five in St. John, the fifth chapter, verse number six, correction. Jesus says, and when Jesus saw him live and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, would thou be made whole? Jesus simply asked him a question. Would thou be made whole? See, he didn't ask him for an explanation. He wanted to know if you believe that I can do it. Saints, the problem with a lot of believers is they want God to move, but they don't believe that he can do it. They want God to, to, to shift the situation and bring change in their life, but they don't really believe that God can do it. Now, but you've got to have a little bit of faith and you've got to believe God now. Now, you've got to ask God to help your unbelief. Father, help me where I'm lacking in belief. Father, give me, increase me in wisdom, increase me in knowledge, increase me in understanding. So where I lack in faith, increase my faith. Now, when you pray that prayer, Things are going to begin to happen around you that's going to cause you to believe God for other things. That grows your faith. See, a lot of people say, have faith. Let me tell you something. You can't have what you have not matured into. Faith the size of a mustard seed moves mountain. But now catch this. If faith the size of a mustard seed moves mountain, now your first faith experience will not be a mountain experience. Your first faith experience might be believing that somebody will pay your light bill. That's not a mountain experience. That's just a little bit of faith. See, faith matures. So see, all it takes is a little bit, but it matures, it grows. So see, in the midst of your little bit of faith, the next time you have an experience, you may, you may need to believe God that he'll pay your mortgage payment. See, now your faith is beginning to grow. See, then you may believe God in a situation where you need a home. So now, now you're in a mountain moving experience faith. Because see, now you're believing God for the impossible because your credit's bad. Nobody trusts you because you never paid anybody, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we can go down the list. But the key is this. You're believing that God will be merciful and graceful and that he'll grant you faith. You believe him for a job that you don't qualify for. See, that's another measure of faith. Believing that God will, will open the door and then that God will give you the strategies that you need to qualify. See, a lot of people think, well, I got the job, so I must be qualified. No, 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 no. No, you have what's called a 90-day qualifying process. So just because the door opened, you still got 90 days to prove that you qualify for the job. Now, catch this. The number nine is the number of fruitfulness. So that means you've got, nine, you've got 90 days to prove that you can do this job. Then after that, you get another evaluation. And when you get that evaluation, with that evaluation should come an increase in your pay. So see, God wants to bring shift. God wants to advance. 
He wants to excel you, but you got to have faith to believe that he can do it. See, and faith is an action word, moving out on what you believe that God can and what God will do. God, in this verse, Jesus simply asked this man, would thou be made whole? Now listen to what this man says. The important man answered in verse number seven in John chapter five. The important man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. Now notice, this man had an excuse for what he was dealing with. He said, it is not my fault that I'm not whole, but while I'm on my way, somebody step in front of me. That's not what Jesus asked him. Jesus didn't ask him, why are you not say whole? He asked him, would you be whole? So see, there's a difference. A lot of times we hear, but we're not listening. A lot of times we hear, but we don't perceive. A lot of times we hear, but we don't, we don't, we don't comprehend. So Jesus asks him one question, and he gives Jesus another answer, just like us today. We ask one question, and we don't answer the question, but we think of a reason why we can justify this didn't happen or that didn't happen. That's not what God asked him. Look at verse number 8 in St. John chapter 5. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Now notice, since Jesus asked him, Will you be made whole? He tells Jesus why. Jesus doesn't go through all this and that. See, Jesus is on an assignment. Catch this, saints. He's in divine timing. He's on an assignment. A miracle has to happen at the pool of Bethesda to increase the faith in others. See, he's at an appointed time, in an appointed season, in an appointed hour to bring forth a miracle. And he told somebody who had been suffering for 38 years to receive the miracle. Let me tell you something. Your life has a divine timing. It has a divine appointment. And certain things will happen in your life in certain seasons. You can't rush it. You can't push it. You can't make it. You got to be patient and wait on God. This man waited 38 years, but in the process of the wait, the miracle happened. In the process of his persistence, the miracle happened. In the process of him continuing to remain faithful, the miracle manifested. Let me tell you something. Power, signs, wonders, miracles, and demonstrations happen in life because we're persistent, because we believe, even when people around you doubt. Remember the story of Job. Job got sick. And the Bible says that when Job got sick in his body, see, the enemy had already told God that Job would curse him and die. But Job blessed the Lord, even in, in dying moments. The Bible says he broke out in balls and sores all over his body. But he still blessed God. But let me tell you what happened. Job feared what happened to him. See, fear can bring life to a dead situation. A lot of people are fearing that this is going to happen. They're fearing that that's going to happen. But what they've got to do is they've got to decree and they've got to declare the exact opposite. Because see, if you fear the thing you feared most, the thing that Job feared most is what came upon him. He feared losing it all. And guess what? He lost it all. The only thing he didn't lose was his wife. But he lost everything else. But see, his faith was with God. So even in all that he went through, he didn't lose God. He, he stayed with God. He remained with God. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but bless be the name of the Lord. So in the case you're in a process where things look like they're failing all around you, still bless God. Still give him glory. Still give him honor. Still give him praise. Remember where he brought you from. Remember what he's already done. The creed declared that, Lord, if you're capable of doing this, I know you can do that. The creed declared, Lord, if you don't do it, it can't be done. In other words, you got to let God know I'm, I'm depending and I'm, I'm putting my faith and my trust totally in you. If you don't move, Lord, it, it can't happen. It won't happen. In other words, God wants you in a situation where he say, I'm getting all the glory. I'm getting all the honor. I'm getting all the credit. And I'm getting all the praise in this matter. In other words, God will put you in a situation where man won't get no praise. Your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your sister-in-law, your brothers, your, friend, your uncles, your friends, your cousins won't be able to say they've done nothing in this situation. Because guess what? God is going to do it for you. He's going to move on your behalf himself. So others will not get the glory. Others will not get the credit. But it all belongs to the Heavenly Father. And he'll position you where you'll be just, you just have to give him praise. You just have to thank him in the midst of what you're experiencing. You just have to bless him, God bless you. You just have to bless him in the midst of what you're going through. Because in the process of doing so, that's when your breakthrough comes. See, breakthroughs come because we believe, not because we can see it, not because we, we already know it's going to happen. Breakthroughs come, see, when you're, in a, when you're in a breakthrough situation, you're believing God for the impossible. 
And see, that's what God specializes in. See, he specialized in miracles. He specialized in the impossible. He specialized in situations where others, thanks for sharing. He specializes in situations where others need him to move. He specializes in situations where, where nobody else can do it but him. See, that's the, that's the father you want. You want a God that can do, that can move on your behalf where others can't move. Because see, you're going to be giving him glory. You're going to be giving him honor. You're going to be giving him praise. Watch this. Jesus tells this man, he says, rise and walk. Now notice something. Jesus speaks to him. Now guess this. Through you, Jesus will speak to your situation and your situation will obey. Catch what I just said. I said through you. Jesus will speak through your situation and your situation will obey. Through others, Jesus will speak to your situation and your situation will obey. Why is that? Because the word is subject to the prophet. When you open your mouth and decree and declare what the Holy Spirit is putting in your spirit, the word that is released from your spirit will cause things around you to shift. It will cause changes to take place in your life. The word that's released through your spirit will cause your very situation to change. It will cause your very situation to break. In other words, where the enemy has been holding things and he's grabbing and he's holding it tight, it will cause that situation to be released by the enemy. And breakthrough will begin to take place in your life. And manifestation will begin to come forth mightily with power and with authority. And every time you turn around, something new will be happening in your life because you will go out of the season of suffering. You'll go out of the season of light. And you'll enter into a season of promise and increase. You'll enter into a season of the abundance and the anointing and the fire and the Holy Ghost of God. You'll enter into a season where God is releasing the riches of his glory upon you. And everything you touch will be anointed and it will begin to prosper you. You will begin to advance and you will begin to excel. Why? Because you're coming out of a season of light and you're entering into a season of promise. And all God knows how to do in the season of promise is release blessings, abundance, increase, healings, miracles, signs, wonders, deliverance, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the anointing. He just released on you and he keeps on pouring. And the more you give him glory, the more he pours. The more you bless him, the more he pours. The more you give him, the more he, re he re releases back to you. The more praise, the more you praise God in your storm. The more you praise God in your situation, the more he blesses you, the more he increases you the more he advances you. So, so you can look at it from a dire situation or you can say, you know what? The Bible says in all things, give praise. So I remember when everything was going great in my life and I was praising God and shouting up and down the aisles and carrying on. But now I'm in a situation, you still got to praise God. You still got to shout up and down them all out and carry on. Like nothing is going on in your life. Never let the enemy get the praise in a situation in your life. Praise God like ain't nothing going on. Praise God like everything is working mightily and fine in your life. Why? Because you, your praise shifts your situation. Your prayer, your fasting shifts your situation. And the enemy has to take his hand off of it. The enemy has to let it go. See, he, see, he can only mess with you for a season. But when his season is up, he's got to release it and let it go. He's got to release it back to you. Why? Because that's the will of the Father that you increase. See, it's God's will that you prosper. It's God's will that you advance. It's God's will that you move forward in the things of his kingdom. It's his will that he bless and increase and enlarge you. And many folk are worried about how I'm going to do this and how I'm going to do that. Oh, don't worry about that. God's got that all in control. All you got to do is just keep praising him. All you got to do is just keep blessing him. The man at the pool of Bethesda could receive his healing because when Jesus told him to stand up, watch what he does in verse number nine in St. John the fifth chapter. And immediately the man was made whole. Jesus spoke into his spirit. And when he spoke into his spirit, his spirit obeyed what the voice of Jesus said. It says, and immediately he was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day, it was the Sabbath day. Catch this. Jesus speaks a word. Don't you know all Jesus got to do is speak on your behalf. Speak in your situation. Speak in your circumstance. And in the process of him speaking, manifestation begins to take place. In the process of him speaking, miracles begin to happen. In the process of him speaking, signs and wonders begin to take place in your life. Change begins to happen simply because the word was released. The man received the word in his spirit. Let me tell you something. A lot of folks don't excel and move forward because when the word is released, they don't receive the word in their spirit. Let me tell you something. When you receive the word in your spirit, you engulf that word. And that word begins to take shape and that word begins to cause your spirit to blossom. 
And as your spirit begins to blossom, manifestation begins to take place all around you. Guess what? Because see, you've received a new impartation. And because now you've got a new impartation, you can, you can begin to move in a new remnant of, of thought. You can begin to move in a new, in a new outlook. In other words, where it was dark around you, now the light begins to shine. And the reason the light begins to shine is because you've received a new word, a word that refreshes you, a word that revives you, a word that shifts your spirit and causes you to see things from a totally different perspective. In other words, I'm not looking at this thing from a negative perspective, but I know that if God can do a miracle for a man for 38 years, he'll do a miracle in my life. He'll do a miracle in my situation. He'll do a miracle in my sickness. In other words, when you begin to thank God for your sickness and not say, I got this. In other words, some people own sicknesses. Let me tell you what I mean. So you're a diabetic. So you tell everybody I'm a diabetic. You tell everybody, I'm, I, oh, I'm a diabetic. Guess what you're doing? You're owning your sickness. You're not owning healing, but you're owning the sickness. But when, you, but when you say, I'm healed by his stripes. Father, praise you for my healing. Father, I give you glory. Pain hit your body. Father, praise you for, for the healing this pain. See, when you begin to give God praise for healing and thanking him for moving in your situation, a reversal takes place. And what happens is there's a 180 degree turn and your spirit begins to go toward God. And let me tell you something. The fire of the Holy Ghost consumes every infirmity. The fire of the Holy Ghost will burn every sickness. It will burn every disease because Jesus is living on the inside. If you go back and you go into, if you go into a church and all of a sudden the glory of God comes in, people will start saying, I'm hot. I feel like I'm on fire. What's happening is the Holy Spirit is now working miracles signs and wonders are beginning to happen all around you because the fire of God is burning and consuming cancer. It consumes AIDS. It consumes sickle cell. It consumes whatever rheumatoid arthritis. It doesn't matter what it is. The fire of the Holy Ghost consumes it. It burns it up simply because of the fact you believe God, simply because of the fact you're expecting your miracle. In other words, when you go to God, you go to God in expectation. You go to God believing that he will do the impossible. You don't go to him doubting. Oh, Lord, if you will, please. You may as well not even go to the Father because your heart is not in the place of receiving. But when you go to God and say, Father, I thank you for my miracle. I thank you for moving in my situation. I thank you for financial breakthrough. I thank you for moving in the situation where my home is concerned. I give you glory because you're moving mightily on my behalf. Then God moves because you're shifting him on the throne and you're letting him know that if he don't do it, nobody else can. When you begin to praise him from that perspective, surely it's going to make the devil mad. Surely it's going to make the enemy mad. But in the process, you're going to see your miracle. In the process, you're going to see your breakthrough. In the process, you're going to see delivery. And people are going to wonder, how in the world did you get him? Child, I praise God. I didn't look at what I was going through. I just began to give him glory. I just began to give him thanks. I just begin to magnify, edify, glorify, and exalt him in the midst of my situation. And guess what? God began to move mightily. He began to move miraculously. And in the process of doing so, my miracle took place. Things began to happen in my life simply because I shifted the way I was thinking. I got out of a negative place. I got away from negative thinking people. I got away from negative talking people. And I began to align myself with what the word said. And I began to decree and declare the word of God. And God honors his word. He moves on his word. He acts on his word. So in your storm and in your situation, decree and declare the word of God. This man of God could receive his healing because Jesus was the walking word. And when the word spoke to him, he obeyed. Let me tell you something. He could receive his healing because he followed the instructions. Jesus simply told him to do one thing in, in St. John, the fifth chapter, in verse number eight. Jesus said unto him, rise and take up thy bed and walk. Now, I want you to see the measure of this. First of all, there's an anointing for him to rise released. The anointing for him to get up is released. The anointing that strengthens him to stand is released. Then there's another measure. Then the take up thy bed. So that means there's a greater measure of the anointing release because he needs enough strength to be able to carry his bed. Now this is now. So his ankle bones are strengthened. His faith is strengthened. See, when, when something positive happened in your life, your faith is renewed. Your faith is strengthened. Your alliance and your trust in God is strengthened at that very moment. So his faith was strengthened. He, he got up out of the bed and he began to pick up that bed and he began to walk. So see, there's a measure. Can you see there's three measures? Rise, take up our bed, 
and walk. There's three measures of the anointing. There's three measures of order. There's three measures of instructions given to this man. And he follows the instructions. Now, now catch this down. He's able to do this because he didn't say, I can't. He didn't focus on his weakness. He forgot that he was crippled. He forgot that he couldn't walk. But he acted on the word. Let me tell you something. Miracles happen when you act on the word of God. Catch what I said. Miracles, if you look at this, this man acted on what Jesus said. He moved on what Jesus said. He didn't doubt him. He believed for the impossible and the impossible happened in his life. And I say to you today, whatever your storm is, if you believe for the impossible, the impossible will take place in your life and the devil in hell can't stop it. Say that can't stop it. Because when you're walking in the impossible, you're walking with God. The Bible says with God, all things are possible to him that believes. In Hebrews 11 chapter, it says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is God. And that he is the God that rewards them that seek him. Now, I'm paraphrasing because I'm adding things to that. Believing that he is and that he is the God that will move and do the miraculous. In your life today, God wants to move. In your life today, God wants to do the miraculous. He wants to move mightily on your behalf. He wants to shift and turn things around just for you. All you got to do is believe it. Don't speak doubt. I don't care how dire your situation looks. Trust God. Now, I didn't say your situation wasn't bad. I said, I don't care how bad it is. Trust God. Because there's no situation that you're in that God cannot deliver you out of. You got to keep giving him glory. You got to keep giving him praise. You got to keep magnifying him. You got to see your victory in the spirit, even though it hasn't manifested physically. Because in the in and in, in seeing your victory manifest it. When you see your victory manifest, others will wonder how, how it happened. Now, now careful now. When God begins to move, don't take his glory. Make sure you give him praise. Make sure you give him honor. Make sure you thank him for the blessing. And when he instructs you to move, make sure you obey his voice. Because your blessing, your increase, excuse me, is in your obedience. It's in your willingness to give God glory in spite of of what it looks like. See, God blesses us because in return, we bless him. And with that being said, let us pray. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the man at the pool of Bethesda. We thank you that after 38 years, you came and you healed him. Father, where we have doubted that you will work a miracle in our life, where we have, where we have doubted that you can move miraculously on our behalf, where we have doubted that you can do the impossible, we repent and we ask your forgiveness. But Father, today, we ask you to release an anointing to move in miracle measures in our lives. Release an anointing to break the strongholds of Satan. Bind the powers of the adversary rising against us now. Release a standard against him according to your word. Move miraculously on our behalf for your glory, for purpose, and for destiny. And bind Satan in his satanic attacks. Bind the demonic attacks coming against us in the airway, but release the Holy Ghost and fire to consume every spirit and every attack of the enemy coming from the north, south, east, and west. Break his stronghold. Father, now we vow to give you all the glory. We vow to give you all the honor. We vow to give you all the praise in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, Father, we ask you to activate this word. Every crevice, every crack of it, Seed, root, and fruit in our spirits and cause us to walk in a greater measure of understanding, a greater measure of faith, a greater measure of trust to believe that all things are possible with you, God, and that with you, you can do the impossible. And for that, Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, while I'm on this live stream, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says with the mouth confession is made and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So if you don't know Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And it's simple. Just say, Father, I'm a sinner. And just say, I repent of all of my sins and all of my iniquities. Say, Father, I believe that your son Jesus died and rose for my sins and my iniquities. 
Say, Father, I repent today of all sin and all iniquity. Say, I ask your forgiveness. Say, Father, today I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer with me, you are born again. You've just accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your, of your life. And as I say so many times, the angels in heaven are rejoicing for one more soul that has entered in the glories of our Lord. And this is Apostle Barry Space, better known as, as 32 Rock. Thank you so much for being on this live today. God bless you, you, and especially you. And until the next time, I will be coming on this coming Sunday again. This coming Sunday, I'll be coming on again this coming Sunday at uh, 1215 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be coming live from the sanctuary uh, this coming Sunday. We'll be having church at the sanctuary, so we give God glory, honor, and praise. God gets all the glory. Don't worry about being late. Just feast on what you receive, woman of God. God bless you. I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate your support. God gets all the glory, all the honor, and praise. Thank you so much, uh, those of you who are my followers, those of you who are new followers. Thank you so much for your support on live stream. Don't forget to go to my my po on my profile and subscribe uh click the youtube and subscribe to my youtube there are a lot of a lot of word a lot of powerful messages on youtube that can begin to bring a shift and a change in your life i'm apostolic i teach from a different measure i believe in teaching kingdom because the power and the authority comes through kingdom it comes to believing in signs wonders miracles and demonstrations it comes to believing for the impossible to move in your life and I believe that God wants to do something impossible just for you. So God bless you now. Until the next time, stay encouraged. Father, we give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.